demonstrator from Wells, Maine, and every Friday I like to come to you with a live video of a project I'm doing. And so I call it Friday Night Live, and I'm so glad and grateful for those of you who join me, um, whether it is live like right now or on the replay. If you're watching live right now and are logged into YouTube, go ahead and go into the chat function and say hello to me. I'd love to know who's watching. And um, if you are not, oh, Sheila's there. Hi, Sheila. And if you are not um, able to find the chat or do the chat, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or a heart or whatever you have access to over there. Anyway, I think we're going to get started because, um, you know, it's 7.30, so why not? I am going to turn you down now. For those of you who were at my team meeting um, on Zoom, you will recognize this. And I showed people at my in-person meeting. And uh, But I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate it live again and just show you a little bit of a variation uh, for those of you who have seen this before. So let me go ahead and turn you down. And that is up not down so we'll have to flip like this there we go there's my work surface and then i'm gonna put my lights down so i have better lighting there we go hi suzanne nice that you could join me on a friday night we're gonna start with a piece of designer series paper that starts uh, that measures as seven and three quarters by 12 inches long and you want to make sure it is in landscape fashion, which means it's going, uh, it's longer this way. So this is portrait and this is landscape. And you want to make sure that when you peek at the other side from the top, it's non-directional or it's a direction that's the right way um, because this will be showing. I'm going to bring in my Simply Scored tool. You can, of course, use a paper trimmer. However, I find that People tend to rip that a little bit more with a paper trimmer. So whenever I'm using or uh, making bags and boxes, I like my Simply Scored tool a lot. So we're using designer series paper. So we want to use the larger ball end versus the small because it'll have less chance of tearing the paper because the paper is thinner. And on this long side, we are going to score at four and a half. Five and a half, eleven, um, sorry, um, ten, and eleven. And then we are going to rotate it ninety degrees and we're going to score on the short side. We're going to score at one inch. and six and three quarters inches, which is one inch from um, the other end. All right, and then we can put our Simply Scored tool away. Now what I wanna do is I want to fold and burnish. So if you were my phone folder, where would you be? Oh, you'd be right in my bag where you're supposed to be. Nice. So I'm just gonna make a nice crisp fold there. And I'm gonna fold the other way on the bottom. Okay, this one can open back up. But with this one still folded, I am going to fold on all the other score lines. And I'm using my fingers to kind of feel where they are because it's hard to see on this particular paper. But the reason why I want to fold with this turned down is because it needs to kind of fit around it. And so because there is a ever so slight thickness of the paper, that's going to give us the best fit. And so let me find the others, the other fold lines. So we have those all folded, and once they're folded, they are easier to see as well. Now this little um, corner over here, we're gonna cut completely off. So there's this one inch square here. We're gonna cut that completely off, and in fact, we are going to miter this edge here. That's going to be the tab 
that holds the bag together. That's what I'm gonna to refer to in my directions on my blog as the side tab. And I think I mentioned that it was a half an inch. Um, oh, you know what? Cause I think I, I don't know what I, yeah, we're gonna go with this. So yes, yeah. so when I fold back over here in the middle fold line, you can see that this lines up perfectly and that's what we want to see. So you do want to test that because if you're going to make any corrections to your scoring, now's the time to do it before you start gluing things down. And then on all these other vertical lines, I'm going to cut up just to that first score line that I come to. And then on these small tabs right here, I'm going to miter in a little bit. So I'm just going to angle cut in just a little bit just helps my box kind of go to bed go together a little bit more nicely there we go all right so now we have that done and before i go ahead and start sticking this together which i i could do at least this part right now um, I can go ahead and do my tear and tape. If you are using glue, don't do the glue yet. Um, in fact, to avoid some confusion, what I, let's set this aside. We're gonna do the decoration next because that's easiest to put on when it's flat. So for the decoration, I'm gonna actually make a little card on the front here. So I have a piece of cardstock that measures three and three inches by seven inches. And I'm gonna score that in half. I might as well just bring this back out because it's handy. I'm gonna score using the smaller end here at the three and a half. So that's, that's just gonna fold it right in half. It's gonna give me this little mini card that can go on the front. So Suzanne and Sheila, you guys got any plans for tomorrow? The weather's going to be gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and put a little adhesive on this petal pink layer. That is a quarter of an inch smaller. So it is two and three quarters by three and one quarter. Then I've got a piece of white, which I really need two of these, two of these same things. This is going to be two and a half by three. So just another quarter inch smaller. I'm gonna bring in my Be My Valentine stamp set. And again, you can switch out the words and it doesn't have to be a Valentine. Um, you could use for you, you could, you know, you could do a lot of things here. Um, in fact, I think, uh, I don't wanna go look at my stamps over across the room. So I'll just use the one that I had, had planned. We're gonna get out a piece of scrap, um, Daffodil Delight. I'm gonna get out my Memento Black here, and I'm gonna take the B Stripes and Stinger image from my stamp set and put that right on there. All right. And if you want to stamp over it again, you can, and it makes it darker. And you're using photopolymer stamp sets, which makes it easy. Oh, you're going to be making Valentine cards. Well, that's good, Suzanne, but you got to get out a little bit because it is going to be gorgeous out tomorrow. And you don't want to miss that. 55 at least, I think. And then next, next week it goes back down to winter again. All right, so I'm going to punch this out. And uh, let me see where it went here. All right, there you go. Got some little hearts that came out with it. And that piece of paper is just about done. So now I have this little guy and I'm gonna add a face to him. And there are several faces in this stamp set. There's a little regular smiley face. There's a winky face. There's a really, really smiley face. This one makes me happy. This one, I'm not exactly sure what that means. 
it doesn't look happy to me. So I'll probably never use that one. Um, but I'm going to use the one that makes me really happy to look at. And again, I'm going to bring in my memento. And I'm just going to add a little face to my bee. There we go. Simple and cute, right? And I should wash that before I put it away. I do have to get the antenna out, and the antenna are small as well, so I'm going to use this same little block. Now, on this piece of paper right here, this cardstock right here, this is the only part that's cut out. I'm going to put the wings on the white directly. And I'm just going to kind of figure out where they go right there and stamp them right up near the top. And then I know that if I put this here, I can kind of see where my antenna are going to go. I'm going to put them right there. See, like that. And then I do have, there's a little bee trail in here that's really cute. I'm going to go ahead and bring that in, stamp that, and I need a piece of scrap paper because I'm going to miss this a little bit. So if that's how I want my bee, I know my trail is going to go about like that. So it's mostly off on that paper. And then we can go ahead and glue the bee's body down. Now, if I, um, I could put that on dimensionals. Sure, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. I think two dimensionals will work nicely here. All right, and I want to turn just a little bit. There we go. So there's my B. And now I need a little sentiment here. So I'm going to bring in my sweet sorbet ink. And I thought the you make my heart buzz sentiment was it's okay. I wouldn't give this probably to my husband or my kids, but for demonstration purposes. I mean, that's just me. This this will do. All right. And so now all I need to do is I need to add a couple of more um, little blingy things. So I'm working my way through this adhesive backed hearts and flowers that came with this B Sweet. And I'm not going to bother with my take your pick tool. I've got my scissors out here. In the paper that we're using, you can see that there are some pool party, I think it's pool party, um, blue hearts. So I'm going to use my remaining three blue hearts that are here and put some decoration on here. These hearts are really cute. They're very, very flat. So it will not cause any trouble mailing. And so there is the front. Now all I need to do is adhere this. To my other pieces that I already had adhered together. There we go. And as I said, this is a little card. So I'm going to put another piece of basic white in here. Uh, let's see here. I guess I got a cut one. So that means I need to find my paper trimmer which is in my basket where it should be. So I'm just going to cut another piece, same dimension, I think. We're going to go with two and a half by three. And then we can stamp on this if we want to. Also in here are some flowers. So I could bring in uh, my little flowers uh, there's a there's a stem in here. Let's see. Let's do one of those. Let's do the smaller of the two stems. And this looks to be uh, I'm trying to figure out which green it is. So I need to look on the back of my designer series paper. And it is lemon lime twist. 
So I'm going to get my lemon lime twist out. And I'll put that right there. And let's go ahead and um, we could put the flower there. You can see that there are two flowers. I'm going to go ahead and put the petal pink in there. The sweet sorbet would be great as well, obviously. But let's let's go with the same flower that's in our in our paper. I haven't used this flower yet. So there we go. Look at how nice and clean my petal pink pad looks. Hmm. That is not the case for most of my pads. It looks like it hasn't been used and I know I've used it. So tomorrow at four o'clock, um, the church where I work, Curtis Lake, is having a game night. So, you know, families can come and play all sorts of games. There's games kids like, like Gaga Ball, and um, there's probably, a there might be a volleyball, um, basketball, that kind of stuff. But there's also lots of board games and um, all sorts of different fun things to do. And so I'm really looking forward to that because I love games. Love, love, love them. So on this particular bag, now we are going to put this on the front of the bag. But what is the front of the bag? Well, first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to help myself out by gluing down the top. Just make it, make it stay in place. Um, and I might do this edge pretty well. Make sure the edges are good. Hold that down. I'm gonna... It just kind of keeps it down there, keeps it in place. Makes it look a little bit more finished. Now, when I wrap this around and I adhere this, um, this tab in here, Okay, this is going to be the back side of the box. So that means this side is the front of the box. So the one that is closest to your side tab, that is where you want to put your card. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I think I'm just gonna do it with regular glue. This will mean this bag can't actually be used by someone else. I can't re-gift with it. All right, so we'll just put that down there. And I'm centering that between the side uh, fold marks and this little bottom edge of the um, honeycomb and this little fold edge that makes the bottom. So that's where that's going. All right, so now we're ready to put our bag together. I'm gonna put some tear and tape. Along both edges of this tab. Okay. And then I'm also, remember this is the front so I'm going to put tear and tape on these small little square tabs. Oh, that one stuck to my finger. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to put some right in the middle of this other long tab, so the back one. And now it's time to take off all the backings. Uh, well, let's go ahead and just take off this backing first. So if you flip it over, this is why you don't want to take off all the other backings because they'd be sticking to my work surface. I should probably get my take your pick tool out and just make this a lot easier. I think 
fingers don't want to pick it up. There we go. This one just does not want to come. There we go. Now, it's just the tab that you want folded over like this. And you're going to fold this over on this leftmost tab of the, the one inch side. You want the one on the left. And you fold this right over and it should line up perfectly. And you hold that together. So now you can see you have your bag here. And then you want to take off, that one's already off, but take off the other backings. You're going to put the two side tabs in first and then the other one with adhesive. You wanna make sure it's nice and squared up. And then you're gonna fold over that front one. And then I like to do this, just kind of press down with my bone folder inside, just make sure everything's all adhered together. And so there is your little bag and this fits greeting cards. I, let's see if I have some, oh, here, here's, here's a greeting card and envelope. You can see that it fits nicely right in there. Now, if you would like to have a handle on this, you don't have to, but if you'd like to have a handle on this, I cut a piece of sweet sorbet, um, the bordered ribbon, and it's about nine inches. You can, of course, adjust the handle as you would like. And I'm gonna take two of the diamond shaped or square shaped white brads here. I could use black, but I'm gonna use white because that's what's on here. I need to get a small hole punch. Let's see, where's my quarter, uh, my eighth inch hole punch. This is an old, old, old hole punch from Stampin' Up. I'm gonna just punch one little small hole in the center of this side square up here, center-ish. Oh. That's Crash saying hello. And then these poke really right through here. I'm just gonna poke that through maybe half an inch up or so. Stick that there and put the prongs down. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, making sure that my ribbon is not twisted. So maybe I do this. Let's go ahead and uh, let's. Okay. And we've got that. And so now we have a little bag with a sweet little handle. Makes it easy to carry. And that's our project tonight, a card on a bag. Obviously you can use, lose the card front. You can just make a 2D front. So here's an example of that. So same thing, it just sticks on there and then somebody could re-gift this bag. Um, but if you want the card on the front, that's an option for you. So let me turn you back around. Oops, and you don't need to see. Oh, there I am. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that I have uh, moved one step further in getting my retreat underway, my spring Stampin' Retreat, which is going to feature the Perennial Lavender suite of products, is going to be April 20th. Um, it'll start April 19th for those that um, it'll be either online or in person, depending on if you get a hotel room or not. And uh, it's going to be at a local hotel on Saturday all day, 9 to 9. And it's going to be fantastic and fun, and I'm going to open up registration sometime this weekend. I'm hoping to do it tomorrow. So keep an eye on your email for that, and uh, it should be lots of fun, and I've got lots of surprises in store. So I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you before you know it. Tune in Tuesday is coming up this coming Tuesday. Stay tuned to see what I have planned for you. Have a good weekend.